audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Foundations. So yes, God does love. He is a God of love and grace, but He is also a God who will judge righteously according to the circumstance. But if you want to interpret and understand Him, the context is absolutely essential. Foundations. Understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. Well, it goes without saying that English can be a very confusing language, <laughs> which is, uh, often uh, creates difficulties when it comes to understanding the different uses of a word in different situations. Context is the key. Absolutely true. Actually, I w- once heard of some immigrants to Australia who were struggling with learning the English language just because there just are so many seeming contradictions within the language itself. For example... If I use the word crane, what am I referring to? Well, could be a, a machine or a bird, for example. Yeah, or somebody who is has a you know wants to crane their neck to mm-hmm. to, to to see something. You know, it's, it, it's all about the context. It's the same word, and yet the context determines what it, the meaning is. And there's quite a few words that we have in our English language, like a date. Yeah. A date can be a fruit or it can be a date on the calendar or a young couple going out mm-hmm. on a date. A couple becomes engaged to get married and then they engage in the process of organising a wedding. Um, <laughs> there's so many words like that, like a function. It describes a machine or a process or something, but then you can have a business or a social function. You may be able to type on a keyboard, but what type of keyboard are you going to type on? <laughs> you know, we have all these words. It's basically the same word, but depending on the context determines what it's actually talking mm. about. And that's exactly what happens when it comes to the God of the Bible. The context determines why he's doing something. In our society, if we turned around and said, and your darling wife would have said this because I know I said it as a wife (laughs) to my children, is that just wait till your father gets home. Now, depending on the situation, it could be that dad's coming home with a birthday present. So there's excitement there. Just wait till your father gets home is, oh, your dad's coming with a present. Or it could be you've just got into trouble at school and it's just wait till your father Mm. comes home. (laughs) And it means something. So the anticipation is quite varied depending on the context. Depending on the context. Context is absolutely essential. Now, there is a word in the Hebrew that is... It's basically this this one word, depending on the context, determines what it means. And the word is pakad. And it can mean something wonderful and it can mean something absolutely terrible, depending on the context. And in some translations, the word pakad is translated as visit. And again, depending on the context, determines whether that Visit is good or bad. Psalm 8 4 says, What is man that you take thought of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Now, in this particular verse, the word pakad is translated as care. And in the book of Ruth, the same verse is used and it's translated as visited. Like Ruth 1 6 says, And then she arose with her daughters in law that she might return from the land of Moab, for she had heard in the land of Moab that the Lord had visited his people, giving them food. Mm. That was Naomi speaking. And in 1 Samuel, it uses the word pakad, referring to God visiting Hannah by answering her prayer. And it's the same word. Mm. The truth is, that in all those cases, he did visit and care for his children in mm. those situations. So both definitions are true in that, in that situation. Exactly true. But then there's another place where pakad is used, and it's in Exodus 32, 34, and it says, But go now, lead the people where I told you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I punish, I will punish them for their sin. And the word pakad is used twice there, and it's used to say punish. Mm. So it, before it was care, and then it was visit, now it means punish. Exactly the same word. But the context is actually very, very different. And this is like a negative rendering of the word pakad. But he, and he, is, he does actually, if you wanted to use the word visit in every situation, mm. for example, depending on the translation, but if you used the word visit, yes, he is visiting a punishment. He's visiting care. He is visiting by answering mm. with food and, and provision. It all means the same thing, but the context is yeah. actually 
radically different. Makes me think of visiting the principal's office, but that's probably not a good situation, <laughs> is it? <laughs> you pack ad the wrong yeah, way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Jeremiah twenty three two says, Therefore thus says the Lord God of Israel concerning the shepherds who are tending my people, you have scattered my flock and have driven them away and have not attended to them. Behold, I'm about to attend to you for the evil of your deeds. In that verse, the word pakad is used both times and translated as attend and attended, and one is used in a positive, one is used in yeah. a negative. And that's God using yeah. the same word. So, so because so the shepherds haven't attended properly, God's going to attend, attend to, to them. Exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of tricky, which you've got to, you, you really have to understand the context. So I'm, I'm kind of getting to a point with this, and that is this, that there are many Christians who will look at the life of Jesus and saying, I know Jesus would never judge because he's so loving. But the thing is that depending on the context, he is going to respond in a particular way. We like to say he's all love, though, that he would never condemn or judge anybody, that he can't. He is love. Well, you know, Jesus actually used the word pakad as well. Well, and then, of course, it's been in a, a Greek equivalent. The Greek equivalent in the New Covenant is episcope, and that means... That act by which God looks into, into and searches out the ways, deeds, and character of men in order to judge them, their lot accordingly, whether joyous or sad. Wow. Okay, so the, basically it's the same, the Greek word episcope or the Hebrew word pakat, and basically means God is going to respond to something mm. either negatively or positively depending on the circumstance. Now, Luke 19, to, uh, 41 to 44 says, When he approached Jerusalem and he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known in this day, even you, the things which make for peace, but now they've been hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will throw up a barricade against you and surround you and hem you in on every side, and they will level you to the ground and your children within you and they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. Mm. So the episcopate there is for visitation, which is same as Pakad yeah. in the Hebrew. What's really interesting is Jesus was saying that because they missed this day of visitation, which was the day of his arrival, and I think we were just talking about this in yeah. another program, that there would be Pakad, there was going to be another visitation, and it was going to be a dreadful visitation. So when people say Jesus would never judge, he declared a judgment right here, a very severe discipline on his people. And the thing is, God is a God of love. But because he is a God of such extreme love, he also will respond to the negative form of his love, which is a hatred or a discipline. You know, I've said this before, because God loves children, he hates abortion because he loves marriage. And it's this beautiful picture of him and his bride, God and Israel. Therefore, he hates divorce because divorce is the thing that wants to rip apart mm. this picture that he wants to present to us. So, yes, God does love. He is a God of love and grace, but he is also a God who will judge righteously according to the circumstance. But if you want to interpret and understand him like we want to interpret and understand the word pakad, the context is absolutely essential. So depending on the context that he is responding to determines whether he is going to respond with love and mercy or whether he is going to bring judgment or discipline in any particular given circumstance. So the answer to the question is God loving or a judge? He's the both. answer is both. He's absolutely <laughs> both, yeah. Well, on the next program, we're going to be examining how we define an undefinable God. That's next time on Foundations. This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.